Hello, this is Miss Stephanie from Willard Library, and I am so excited to be here with you all today. Um, during the month of February, we um, have our guests that come to the library, and they're always looking for black history books, um, information about some of our history, um, whether it's a man or a woman, they want to know what it, what the history is um, during black history. And so I wanted to show you some of our books. Uh, we have plenty of books at Willard Library, but here are some that you can come and check out. We have a book called Let It Shine. We have a book, I Am. We have Flying High, the story of gymnastics champion Simone Biles. We have a book to encourage you, I Can Do It Too. And then what I'm gonna read for you today is May Among the Stars. And so we're really excited to let you know that we have plenty and plenty of plenty of resources that you can come check out at Willard Library at the downtown or Willard, downtown or the Helen Warner branch um, for black history. But let me tell you something even more exciting. You don't have to come get a book. I mean, we want you to, but did you know we have history right here in Battle Creek? We have someone that I think is a star in my eyes, someone that I have known 53 years who has history right here in Battle Creek. She was our first African-American woman mayor in Battle Creek. And she also is the owner of Sugar and Spice. This is our own Battle Creek Trailblazer, Maud Bristol Perry. And we are so honored to be able to interview her today. So, Mrs. Perry, thank you for your time. It's such a privilege to be in this beautiful building, Sugar and Spice, and for you to take time out of your busy schedule to allow us to interview you. Um, my first question is, how long has Sugar and Spice been in the community? Well, we started Sugar and Spice in 1973. So we are about 38 years wow. now doing child care. Wow. Um, and uh, we have been the uh, solid rock of the community of taking care of children from all over the community and uh, children that were in need of child care to help the mothers who needed to get employment, to sustain their jobs, and to help the grandparents and the mothers who were seeking an education, uh, that not only that, through situations that they just needed care all daycare. Okay. The difference with Sugar and Spice is that we offer child care, but with the educational component. Mm. So that we weren't just caring for kids and just keeping them here all day, but to educate them, make sure that they were prepared to go to school and to have social interaction and to make sure that they were developing appropriately, they would have access and resources to things that would better their, their health, their growth, and um, nutrient, and just being in an environment that was loving and nurturing. Wow, that is awesome. And 34 years later, you are still successful. What an honor. So what inspired you to work with what inspired you to work with children? Well, basically, I worked for an attorney at that time, and I used to take my children from child care for, for child care services while I worked at El Chusa hmm. Nursery, then it was called. And at that time, that was back in 1970, and I just saw that need. I used to go there and I would always interact with the children and the director of the center. Actually, she encouraged me. She felt that I would be a good child care center director um, to help bring children into the area that needed child care, especially for young working uh, women mm. that had to work 
and they would be that we could provide some type of child care services. What Altrusa did back in those days, they provided child care for for professional people who had children, but they weren't there all day. They were there half a day, two days a week, and then nurseries they would have child care three days a week, mm -hmm. part time. And she felt that there was a need in the community to have care for children full day. Mm -hmm. And that's where the idea started. Okay, wow, that the, just rich history. And so my question to you is, um, what advice would you give mothers, educators, parents? Um, I, I heard what you said as far as that educational component. What advice would you give um, daycares, providers, mothers, grandparents, mentors um, to help their kids um, really see the importance of reading to them and, and having a, a, a really safe component to um, go to as far as the learning environment? Well, I can say to parents, if they have to be away from their children a number of hours, it is good to have them in a daycare. They don't call it daycare. Daycare really means the child is there all day. Mm. They change that idea to a more educational, um, more of an educational setting in terms of child development because the child has to develop to be a whole child development. Mm -hmm. It starts at birth. Yes. And children learn from birth. They learn what they see, what they hear, and the nurturing and the feeding. And children are away from their parents. So if they're away from their parents, they have to develop and grow. Uh -huh. So you want to instill into them the right environment, the loving, and children learn by what they see, what they hear, and what you provide them. That's true. And one of the most important thing is language. Mm. And reading stories to babies. When they just start, you read to them, and that's how they learn. They learn to really to create words and to talk and to interact. Mm -hmm. And not only their cognitive development, but their physical development, their social development, and all of those things that help them grow. Mm. And in a child care setting, when a child comes in, they come to you and they're looking at you as their second home. That's true. So when they come to your second home, we felt we feel what we were so unique because children want to eat. They need to eat. Mm -hmm. They need to be fed. Yes. We were we were provide a breakfast, we would provide a lunch, and we would provide um, um, a snack. Mm -hmm. So they would have the opportunity to be fed every day, where in some settings for them at home, they may get one meal or two meals a day. Mm -hmm. But in this setting, it's required that we feed kids a healthy meal, make sure they eat every day, those things that are good for them and healthy. And then the learning environment was the most important because you're teaching them a routine, you're teaching them a schedule, you're teaching them what to expect, and all of that helped them grow intellectually. Mm. And sometimes when kids are at home, when they're in a setting where they call it daycare or babysitting, they don't get that mm. because they just let the kids do whatever they really want to mm. do, and they didn't have a schedule. But as you can see in the center, the most important thing is books. Books around them all the time. Mm -hmm. We encourage uh, the families to take the kids to library mm -hmm. uh, to get books. Some kids don't have books in their home. Mm -hmm. If they're reading books, it takes them out of the neighborhood. It takes them out of their home. They can just go all over the world uh, from reading books about people, about nursery rhymes, about um, history, about everything. And that really makes a child very confident and makes them eager to learn. Mm -hmm. So I think being in a center where people are providing that type of development for children through the ages, they call them ages and stages. So at each age and stage, 
they are learning things that will help them to go to school mm. and to learn even better than that. So we're wow. busy. That's, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And I will say during this whole pandemic, um, sugar and spice stayed open and they've been successful for all these years because i also think of um the entrepreneurship skills that you have um you show me i remember there was times that i worked for the daycare and through mm -hmm. that i had a passion up for kids yeah. i i learned mm -hmm. the value of working i i learned the responsibility of earning money and saving it and also i love how you have poured those values into your family so you have allowed your family to be a part of this this business and i know many people who have said that they have worked at sugar and spice and yeah. so i think that's what has made sugar and spice so successful you're diverse um you you train people and it's just um good solid values that you are instilling into the kids and so my question to you is, you know, as we grow older, we all have this, I know me, I'm like, oh, it's 65, I, maybe I'll retire and do something else. You still continue. Yes. And so what motivates you to keep going? Because I'm sure you could retire and just say, you know what, I'm, you know, I'm gonna relax. What keeps you going? Well, what really keeps me going <coughs> is the children. Mm -hmm because every year we get a new crop of children, parents that need childcare, and it's just a blessing to be around the kids. They really keep you young, they ask you a lot of questions, and they just love to do things and explore and develop, and they want you to show them things, and someone has to be here to show them. Mm. And then also, I'm here to provide an opportunity for the mothers to have jobs, they need jobs, we hire them, and now we encourage them to go farther, go to school, learn about child development. It really is important. Like teachers, we don't realize everybody's a teacher. Mm -hmm. And when the child asks you questions and you wanna know, well, you can't teach what you don't know. Mm, that's and true. that's one of the things I tell them. So you should read, you should know about your community. You should know what's going on. And I just think it's important to want to encourage your kids. It's like you see little kids particular because they're open. Mm -hmm. And you can just say, come, let's sit down, let's read a book. Or the library in itself is a field trip. Yes. We enjoy that in the summertime. And I love the idea that with a library in the summertime, you would set up little special events mm -hmm. and the kids would come in and you bring in somebody and they would talk about an adventure that they never knew about. Mm. And they, to me, that would encourage and help them to learn to grow. And to have Willow Library to to do the things they do for our young people. And and I have to say this, knowing you and been knowing you for all these years, especially nice to see that the events that you put on for the children every year, every summer, and then you continue throughout the seasons mm -hmm. that the kids are still eager to go to the library and to want to learn. And everybody knows Miss Stephanie. <laughs> and and uh, to hear them say that, but it's especially warm to my heart. And I have to say this, you may not want to be on the tape, but you're my goddaughter and you're in my heart. And to have seen you grow from where you were, going through elementary, high school, and then on to college, and now you're giving back yes. what you've learned. You've given back to the community, you're yes. giving back to the kids, your grandchildren, your children. I think that's marvelous. Thank you, and, um, thank you. That, that's a great, that's great. Well, there you have it, you all. This is Ma Bristol Perry, and a lot of who I am today is because of you. And so I just thank you for what you have instilled in me and um, I just appreciate what you are doing in the community. I remember growing up, and this is gonna be you all's homework assignment. I want you to Google um, Ma 
um, Ma Bristol Perry as the first African American woman in uh, Battle uh, Mayor in Battle Creek. I want you to Google that and find out all the information about it. I remember growing up thinking maybe I'm going to do politics, and then I'm like, mm, no, that's not the part of her I want to continue. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna love the kids, and so here I am at Willard Library. And so we thank you all for tuning in and listening and finding out what kind of rich history we have right here in Battle Creek, Michigan. Thank you, Mrs. Perry. Thank you for inviting me. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I told you that I was going to read you a book. It's called May Among the Stars. It is by Rhoda Ahmed, and we thank Harper Publishing Company for allowing us to read this book online. And so we just heard about one of our stars in Battle Creek. So let's read about May Among the Stars. Little May was a dreamer. They say that daydreamers never succeed, but little May was different. One day, May was working on an assignment for school about what she wanted to be when she grew up. What will you tell them, May? I will tell them I want to see Earth. This is Earth, May, her mother said. The flowers, the grass, the forests, the mountains, we live on Earth. I know, but I want to see Earth from out there. That's an amazing plan, little May. Then you have to become an astronaut. That way you can see Earth from space. Astronaut? Do you think I can do that? Of course you can. If you can dream it, if you believe it, work hard for it, anything is possible. May asked her mom to take her to the library. She searched for books about space and astronauts. After dinner, May drew pictures of space and she even made her own astronaut costume out of old orange curtains and cardboard boxes. Later, she asked her dad, but how do I become an astronaut? It seems impossible. You will find your way, May, because if you dream it, believe in it, and work hard for it, anything is possible. But space is so, so far away. It's closer than you think, little May, and you may get there sooner than you think. That night, May had a happy dream. She was dancing in space, surrounded by billions of sparkling stars. Below her, she could see Earth floating and turning like a shining crystal ball. The next morning, May told her parents about her dream. She wanted to tell everyone, and every time she talked about it, her eyes would light up. In the classroom, Ms. Bell told everyone to stand in line on the rug. Today, we are all going to share our dreams about the future. What do you want to be? What do you want to do when you grow up? Who wants to go first? I want to be a firefighter. I want to be a teacher. I want to be a football player. I want to be a mom. I want to go to space. I want to be an astronaut. All the kids started laughing. <laughs> Miss Bell asked, May, are you sure you don't want to be a nurse? Nursing would be a good profession for someone like you. Uh -oh. I don't want to be a nurse. I want to be an astronaut. May felt very disappointed. On her way home from school, May was quiet. She looked out the car window. Her world turned blue and cold. Nothing was the way it used to be. At home, May started crying. Miss Bell said, I can't become an astronaut. What a silly thing to say, said her mother. She told me I should be a nurse instead, said May. Her mom wiped her tears. My dear May, I hope you didn't believe her. Of course I believed her. She's my teacher. There's a lesson in that. <laughs> I'm sorry Miss Bell didn't encourage you, but she can't stop you. No one can stop you. Follow your dream, May, and go to space. Thank you, Mom. I promise when I get to space, I will wave to you and Dad from the spaceship. Her mom took her hand and they started dancing. You must always repeat to yourself, if I can dream it, I can believe in it, and if I work hard for it, anything is possible.
May went on dreaming, believing, and working really hard. And guess what? She went to space and waved to her mom and dad on Earth. And that is the lesson from Dr. May Jemison. Go to um, come get the book and learn more about her. And remember, if you dream it, you believe it, anything is possible. You can do it. Come check us out at Willard Library. Thanks for your time.